It's hideous. Hello, welcome to my channel, Inch by Inch Art. So today I'm going to be showing you what I did to this awful, sad, unloved little dog sculpture. At least I'm pretty sure it was a dog at some point. I don't know what this thing on its butt is. I decided that I'm going to use epoxy sculpt for the first time ever. thought it would be pretty interesting to try something new, really durable, and make a really strong little sculpture. So you take each part, A and B, smush them together until they're well blended, and then you've got a set amount of time to use it. I'm wearing gloves because I have quite sensitive skin, and I'm just using a metal sculpting tool to scrape off its little butt tick thing. It seems like maybe somebody tried to fix it at some point. I'm not really sure. It, it didn't make any sense. It wasn't at all anatomically correct with the dog in any way, shape, or form. Not that the dog is the most amazing. I'm just scraping off some of the paint that's flaking off so my clay hopefully holds a little bit better. And then I'm washing it because I found it in the junkyard and it was disgusting. So step one is to just put on a layer of the epoxy sculpt all over the dog. I have inspiration in mind for this little guy. I recently joined Instagram and was playing around looking at stuff that I'd enjoy looking at and people I'd like following. And I came across a adorable chubby tiger is the best I can describe it, comic. Uh, well, maybe, yeah, I guess comic's the right way to put it. And I just love them, they're adorable. I also own a rather fat tabby cat myself. So I've got kind of a thing for fat tiger felines. And I'm using silicon sculpting tools, the, just the silicon tips, and wood sculpting tools to sculpt this piece. Also applying water to my tools and fingers to help me smooth it. This stuff actually smoothed really well and it was not tacky at all once your materials are wet. Though it also is much more tacky at the very beginning and then gets firmer and drier as it's curing. The only downside that I noticed, and you might see it in a few shots, is that when it's getting real close to curing, it starts to lose its malleability and it begins kind of pilling. So it'll make little rough balls basically and it's not as easy to push around and really sculpt. I would say, I feel like I had probably close to an hour of workable time with it, which is pretty good for a putty that, or putty or clay that cures on its own. Here I'm just beefing out its thighs and I realized that the thigh wasn't as thick as I wanted for under the tail. So I had put the tail on first, moved it out a little bit and I'm pushing it back on top once I've got that thigh as large as I want it. and a chubby throat. The face was the most satisfying to sculpt.
You can see the sculpture is pretty smooth looking just from the water and pressing with my fingers. At this point, I decided to test how my allergy would be with it. So I had put down the initial body clay with my gloves on and then tried to do smaller bits without them on. Sometimes it's more sensitive than others and it's good for me to know what I should and shouldn't touch at all. And I spilled my water everywhere, awesome. I promise I cleaned the water up off the floor. I just was lazy and <laughs> the water was on the cutting board. So I just dipped my tools in the water on the cutting board. Don't judge me. Just using this silicone sculpting tool to get in the really fine crevices. I want it to be clear that it didn't have, in fact have a separate head and body. Though my personal cat has no neck and it's like his head is part of his body. Here you can kind of see it's doing that pilling thing I was talking about. Just makes like little, well, pills, little grains, I guess. And I'm doing this all over, uh, I think I actually did this project over about two, maybe three months, because I just couldn't decide what exactly I wanted to do with it. But I think actual time with curing each stage probably took me three days of sculpting just because I did it in separate layers. So we do one layer, leave it alone, let it cure for usually a day. It didn't need that long, but that's, I would just usually end up getting distracted or um, not feel like dealing with filming. Using that pointed sculpting tool to put in some little eye slits. He's a happy tiger, so his eyes are closed, you know, like when your cat's just sitting there, it's eyes closed purring. It's totally what this guy's doing. Here I'm just making some little ears. I just uh, rolled out two balls about the same size and then tried to flatten them into half circles and curl them just a little bit. Again, because this stuff is quite sticky when it's not wet, especially when you first mixed it, it just sticks right onto itself. And I was putting it on pieces that were already cured, didn't need any special bacon bond type stuff like you need with Sculpey. It was pretty cool. I liked it. It's not all positives, but overall, I'm definitely going to keep using it. Felt his neck was not quite fat enough, so I'm adding some more beef there. His cute little paws. Please, if you're sanding, wear a mask. So the first sandpaper I use is 400 grit. That's the black. And I just use that to try and get out any of the more significant creases that are left behind from pressing separate pieces of the epoxy together. And I mean, I smooth it with tools and my fingers. So some spots are just not as smooth as I wanted.
Now that I've got the basic sanding done of rougher, bigger pieces, I go in with a higher grit. This is 800 grit, and I'm just getting rid of the more fine issue spots and creases. I don't get it perfect, but honestly, I know I'm gonna be at least painting it, so I'm not overly worried. I just don't want it to look like it's got, you know, a split throat, like here. <laughs> Now that sanding is done, he's ready to paint. My hope was that the paint would stick a lot better if he was sanded as well. I don't think it actually mattered. So I'm using my usual really cheap, junky acrylic paint. It was a mistake. I wish that I had better paints. I actually found out later I did have better paints. I just didn't remember that I owned them at the time. So it is acrylic paint, it's from the dollar store, it's really, really junky, so it has very little pigment, as you can see here. I did the whole thing in white first, just because it's about half white, and I thought it'd be a good base primer. And then I did the orange on top. It is watered down, but not that much, uh, like not enough to make it as thin as it was. I did probably eight coats of the white here. I did extra coats on the areas that I knew would be white forever to kind of mark them off. So around the eyes, the chest, the belly, the tail. And then I went in with the orange and I think I did like at least 10 coats of this orange to get it as orange as it is at the end. It was ridiculous. Here it is after a million coats, <laughs> and we're ready for the black stripey details. Just using a fine brush, and this is still the same junky acrylics, it's just that the black has better pigment. Some of the colors in the kit just have better pigment. Um, black, I think, isn't very surprising that it's better. The orange I actually made was a mix of a very junky yellow that comes in the kit. It's always watery, it's always thin, it's pigments terrible. And then I mix that with a lighter red that's okay with pigment. I was just using several different reference images of tigers to get a feel for what their patterns generally do. Wasn't going for anything super specific, I just wanted it to be obviously a tiger. backs of their ears are black, they usually have a little white spot in the middle. Just using the silicone sculpting tool again to get into the crease of the eyes. I wanted this to be light and cute, so I don't do any kind of washes like I do on my minis or sometimes my sculptures, depending on the look I'm going for. Again, my inspiration was that little cartoon, so I wanted it to be light and cute and happy. So I'm just using very fine tools to get in these details rather than relying on a wash that would have done it really fast but would have made it look darker overall and more detailed and or gritty than I wanted. The stripes that go between the white and the orange for some reason are my favorite. I think it, they're just the most striking. Here I'm doing the mouth, again using a silicone sculpting tool because it was a little bit easier to get into that space knowing exactly where the tool would be. I use these instead of brushes sometimes because a brush can have a stray hair or multiple stray hairs sometimes that will put the paint not where you want it and it drives me nuts. So all my black stripes are on. I'm ready to do his adorable little nose. 
The one in the cartoon is very heart-shaped. My cat's is also quite heart-shaped as well, so I generally went for that shape. I had to put a couple coats of this on as well. This was another color I just mixed myself, but it's, it's like a pinkish orange, I guess. And I lost the film or didn't film it, but I put a very thin black edge all around this and darken his nostrils, which you can see in this image. Now I'm doing the UV resin to seal my color so that I don't have to worry about it scratching off because again it was cheap paint so I was quite worried about that. Also I was so happy with how he was coming out I wanted to seal him forever in resin. <laughs> So I'm just using a pipette here. Uh, I started out with 20 milliliters of UV resin and he's just sitting on a old jello cup that is upside down because it touched just the very bottom and I knew if the resin got on it I could crack it back off quite easily and reuse it. Always good to recycle when you can. It's basically what this project's all about, right? Those drips are so satisfying. I didn't want to waste any brushes, so I don't use any brushes on him because if you get that resin on a brush, that's the end of the brush. I do instead, though, use my silicone sculpting tool here, which works just fine as long as you don't get it on the metal and let it sit and cure or anything like that. You can take it right off a silicone sculpting tool, but I just use that to press it into all the areas and make sure it's got full coverage. I think total I used about 30 milliliters of the resin. Well, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like to see more of me making my art, please like, follow, and subscribe.